Hello, welcome to Managerial Accounting. Uh, today we're going to be talking about cost terminology and your book spends a whole lot of time at the beginning talking about the terminology involved in managerial accounting. And uh, it's important that you get that terminology down because we'll be using that terminology throughout the entire course. Uh, so even though it's early in the book, it's a really important topic that you need to dedicate some time uh, studying and, and kind of commit the terms that we're going to talk about to memory. That way you'll know as we go forward how they're used. So, Our goal in our lecture today is kind of understand cost and the different ways that they can be classified. Now you undoubtedly have an idea of what a cost is. If you've ever been to the grocery store, you know you pay a cost for your groceries and you're enrolled here at the college and you know you're paying tuition. That is a cost. Uh, so to kind of put a formal definition to it, a cost is a measure of what we give up in order to achieve some kind of an object objective. Now, normally when we talk about cost, we measure them in dollars, don't we? And that's not the only way that we uh, can measure cost. We can also measure cost in terms of opportunity cost. If you ever had an economics class, you probably talked ad nauseum about opportunity cost and that's another way that we can kind of look at cost but uh, what we'll focus on in here is kind of the dollar side of things. Another kind of uh, way that we can talk about cost is we group them according to a cost object and the cost object is simply anything that we want to gather cost information on. So we're going to look at the Apple iPad as an example throughout this lecture. Uh, so if we're talking about iPads and being a cost object, the iPad itself for Apple could be a cost object. We could define our cost according to a product line. So it might be an iPad, it might be a MacBook, it might be an iPhone. Uh, whatever the case, we can look at cost and gather up cost for individual product lines. The flip side of that coin could be we could look at our cost and gather them according to the factory as a whole. We could say, okay, well, let's look at all the cost involved at our factory in Taiwan and then gather all the cost together regardless of the product line. So we can look at it by the individual line and make that the cost object, or we could make it the factory as a whole and gather the cost for that. So what I want to do here is I want you to kind of close your eyes, you don't have to close your eyes, but just imagine for a moment that you are a manager at Apple and you are responsible for the iPad line. And uh, your boss comes to you and says that the iPad cost $500 to make per unit and he wants you to try to figure out how to cut that cost down but the only information you have is a total cost figure you know that it cost $500 per iPad that's the only information you have to go by so you probably have a lot of questions you don't really maybe know where to start cutting cost if you don't have any other number than a total cost figure so a lot of times what happens is management requires detailed information about our costs so that way we can do a better job of managing them. If we just have a total cost figure, we don't really know where to begin if we're trying to manage our cost. So in managerial accounting, what we learn how to do is we learn how to classify our cost. And it gives us a little bit better idea of how to manage them if we can break them down into categories. So let's talk about some different cost classifications that we can have. We can have costs that uh, relate to a cost object, and we can classify them in that manner. We can classify costs as they relate to our activity levels, meaning how much are we producing. And we can classify costs as they relate to our financial statements. So what we're going to spend the rest of the time on, the next four or five minutes here, is breaking it down and showing you uh, how costs are classified according to those three areas. The first area, how we can classify cost according to a cost object, and again, a cost object is either a product line or a factory as a whole. Uh, cost can be directly related to a cost object, or they can be indirectly related. Uh, direct costs are costs associated with items that go directly into that product and are conveniently and economically traceable to that product. So to give an example, if we're talking about the iPad, direct cost of the iPad would be things like the screen, uh, as you can see right here, the, uh, the processor, the memory, um, and things like that. Those are going to be directly related to the iPad. Indirect cost, uh, it's going to be cost of production, but it's not feasible to trace them directly to the product. Uh, for example, glue. If we use a couple of spots of glue to glue the screen onto the backside of the iPad, 
that's not going to be worth our time to trace it directly to the product. So instead, we'll just allocate it to the products uh, all, all together at the same time. So direct costs are going to be easily traced to the product we're making. And indirect costs are simply going to be costs that are so insignificant uh, or so minor that it doesn't make sense to trace them directly to the cost object. Okay, so glue would be an example on the iPad, or maybe even the little screws. Maybe there's four little screws in the back that hold it together. Probably not going to be worth our effort to trace it directly to the product, so we allocate it instead. The second area that we can kind of talk about as far as classifying cost is how they relate to activity levels. Okay, uh, simply how they relate to how much we are producing. And the two different costs that we're going to look at here are variable and fixed cost. Okay. Variable costs are going to go up or down in total according to how much we're making. So obviously, if we're talking about parts for the iPad, the more we make, the more our variable costs are going to go up. Uh, we have to have a screen for every iPad. That's a variable cost. If we have to have a thousand iPads that we're making, obviously it's going to cost more to buy those thousand iPads and the screens for them than if we made 500. Okay, so variable costs are going to go up or down in total as they relate to our activity levels. Fixed cost is kind of the opposite. We have to pay our fixed cost regardless of whether we make a million iPads or no iPads. So to give an example, the depreciation on the factory building, that's kind of an expense that's incurred regardless of whether we make anything. Um, maybe our supervisor salaries, we've got to pay them regardless of whether we sell anything. So that would be a fixed cost. That total cost is going to stay the same whether we make a million or no iPads. However, the more we make, the more that fixed cost comes down per unit. So to kind of recap, our variable cost, if we look at those, in total, they're going to go up or down based on how many we make, how many units we make. Per unit, as long as we're within a relevant range, they're going to stay the same. And we said fixed costs kind of exhibit the exact opposite behavior. In total, they're going to stay the same, right? And then per unit, the per unit cost is going to go up or down depending on how many, many we make. The more we make, the more we're able to spread that fixed cost out per unit and make it go down. Finally, we can classify cost uh, according to how they relate to the financial statements. Uh, product costs are the costs that go directly into making the product. That's your direct labor, uh, your direct materials, and your overhead. Uh, all that is what we call a product cost, and it's inventoriable, mean, meaning that that cost eventually ends up in your inventory balance. Uh, the other kind of cost as it relates to the financial statement is what we call a period cost. And that's something that just kind of benefits a period. Uh, probably the most common one of those would be a distribution cost, uh, the cost of our product to get it from point A to point B to the customer. Um, so that's expensed in the period that it occurs. It doesn't go into inventory. It just gets expensed. So we can also relate our cost to the financial statements and either put them in inventory as a product cost or expense them as a period cost. That's a quick rundown of how we classify cost in, uh, in your book. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to help. Uh, my email is on the screen or you can contact me on Blackboard IM. Uh, thanks and we'll see you next time.